You are listening to KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank, your partner in possible. Welcome, everybody, to the Border War Podcast on the Kansas City Sports Network. We are presented, as always, by 360 Vodka. My name is Jared Sutton, and it's always an honor to, to welcome in Jeff Hawkins. Jeff, it's great to see you, man. Yeah. Uh, it's great to have you back. Yeah. Uh, we sure. missed you. Uh, yeah. We've been thinking about you with uh, sure. the passing of, of, of your mother and... Uh, yeah. You know so much has has been going on on your plate, and um, just great to see you back and and smiling and yeah. getting ready to talk some hoops and talk some KU hoops on top. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, we all know I've been been going away. You like you said, never can expect you know uh, a losing a losing a mother and you know trying to deal with that, and that's kind of what kept me away. And uh, but obviously, when I was away, uh, it's just in my blood. It's in my mom's blood, you know. Uh, you know, I was always giving her updates. We were talking basketball as well, too. So um, just being able to get back to this kind of normal mode and, and get back to talking basketball. But don't worry, I was – we weren't talking basketball, but I was definitely thinking basketball. So feels good to be back talking some basketball. Um, I know my mom would want no other uh, than me to continue to talk about basketball. So – uh, um, I'm just glad that, you know, I have the opportunity to be here to talk some basketball. I, uh, I said on our, our previous podcast of just, uh, attending the, the services and hearing stories about your, your mom and, and knowing she was a teacher and, um, that's near and dear to me and both my parents were teachers. And, um, I appreciate great coaches, especially coaches that understand it's about teaching. Yeah. Uh, so you couldn't have had a better, you know, upbringing there with, with your mom and the impact she made on not just you and your, your brother and, and your family, but uh, so many people too. I mean, it was great to hear so many wonderful stories uh, about your mom. So, um, you know, you should you should be proud of uh, yeah. this the life she lived. Oh, you bet. Uh, again, it was it was fun hearing some of those stories, and I got to hear more stories about her than I never I knew about. So it definitely lets me know she had a huge heart for education and teaching. And you know, I think that the the best reward and to honor her is you know, for me to continue to try to touch lives the way that, that she did, that she did. And from judging where I'm at now to where she was, I know I got a lot, uh, I got a, I got a lot of, I got some big shoes to fill. So, uh, but it's just a, a, a blessing to be able to, to hear and feel the support and, you know, to be able to, uh, now I have something to look forward to. And that's, you know, trying to continue the legacy that, you know, she started for, you know, my brother and I. Yeah, I know you. Uh, yeah. mentioned she was a huge hoops fan, and oh yeah, and you know, kind of. I, I loved the the stories of going to KU games with, with her. Oh yeah. And, uh, so oh yeah, you you know, she was proud of you, man, and and what you yeah. were were able to accomplish in, in your career, man. So yeah, hey, we we uh we got a lot lot to talk about. Yeah, we do. Your, your Jayhawks, man, and uh, um, yeah, I know that. I mean, it's crazy too. Like I keep hearing that, like the CBS music playing and. Uh, it's just like it's it's almost here. We're talking about like the big dog, oh, no. big dance. It's coming, but we cool. still got. There's still a lot of things going on here. Yeah, uh, obviously, the Big Twelve is is one of the, the. I think it's the most talked about league in terms of how competitive it is, especially at the top. There has been some separation of of I think the top four, um, and then ultimately right now the top two, um, where yeah. Kansas sits. Uh, Kansas twenty three and five. They're on a five game winning streak uh, as we record this podcast. Had, uh, and this that's since the Iowa State road loss, which I, it feels like that's a long time ago. But they've they've been on a five game streak. They've had some huge wins. Uh, they're coming off a TCU win where that they didn't really play that well. They didn't shoot the ball that well. They didn't get to the free throw line a ton, uh, but had forty two points in the paint. Uh, they were plus twelve in the paint really got a big win and and one of those games too and i think the there there are two games to me i'm curious if you'll agree with this of games that i find to be the most impressive for kansas and i I, the baylor win is an impressive win don't get me wrong like how they played in the second half but i think when kansas can win games when Jalen wilson doesn't score double digits or doesn't go off that's a good sign uh i think that's a good good of of a tough you know gritty team that can find ways to win in other ways they did that at home against texas they did that in this TCU game. And yeah, Jalen Wilson comes up with 13 rebounds and was excellent on the glass. Did other things, even though his shot wasn't falling and wasn't getting a lot of scoring, did other things and they're able to get a good road win against a solid TCU team that that you know blew them out in Allen Fieldhouse not long ago. Yeah, and you know, 
uh, I can't, say, well, kind of feels good to talk about, you know, some KU basketball because I think I've just been talking my wife's ear off. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, you know, like I said, you've, you, you hit it on all angles as well too, you know, five game win streak and Iowa state. I know some Jayhawk fans were thinking a little bit shaky, like, Oh my gosh, like Iowa state gave it to them. And then, you know, they, they, they get some things clicking. You said it best. Uh, Jalen Wilson, you know, for him to be able to uh, have low scoring games and the Jayhawks still to be able to get the job done against quality opponents. I think, uh, I think that's, that's, that's real huge for him. And against TCU, they just, they, they, they were ready to go from the get go. And you, you, they controlled the boards uh, when it comes from an, an assist standpoint, as far as sharing the ball teammates looking for another teammate that's what you want you know they had 19 assists as well too so uh you know they're playing the young guy Grady uh he continues to to grow and uh who knows what's going to happen late in the season for him um McCuller I mean uh, it's so many guys that now I mean I feel like I haven't talked about it for, for so long but uh the development of, the, of them since you know the last time we talked I think it's been tremendous because, I mean, even if you think about Ernest, you know, him starting to, you know, find his way. Yeah, you know, I think the last time we were talking, Jayhawks really were still trying to figure out how to get bigs incorporated. So uh, it's been a it's, it's been a uh, they've developed and gotten better. And I mean, you know, they're they're now, you know, trying to talk about a repeat, which I think that's been, you know, talked about earlier before this. And I don't think that's something that's going to be on the Jayhawks mind but I think just even mention it this goes to show that this is a team that if they get locked in uh they can be pretty dangerous when you look at Kansas too like I I think the, the you know the top 16 got released last weekend and Kansas was really third uh in Alabama yeah. was one and I couldn't believe it just because we all know I, I think Kansas should be the number one overall just because of quad one wins. So that's why we do yeah, this. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> they played the most quad one games and they won the most. And to me, that means you're the number one overall seed. So I, I am curious if that's going to be di- look much differently now. There's obviously more to play here, but if, if we were to, to 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 stop the season right now and start the NCAA tournament, I think Kansas should be the number one overall seed because of these wins. And I think TCU is one of these wins where they find ways to win on the road and I, I you never doubt them. Uh, and I, I think people need to understand, and you know, this, like most people know this, but I, I still think it's overlooked that Kansas wins games sometimes. And the TCU game is perfect when they don't play that well offensively, yeah. but they win by pure toughness and stuff. Yeah. And it felt like TCU had multiple chances to go down on offense and yeah. tie the game or take the lead. And they couldn't get a shot sometimes, or they took a terrible shot. Yeah. Uh, and they got one shot and a rebound. And yeah, I just think there's winning close games. We talked about this. Winning close games, you can if you can do that consistently, it's going to help you in the NCAA tournament because you're going to be in those moments, you're battle tested, and you know how to respond in those moments. Uh, whether you have a lead or not, it's a close game, you find ways to win. And that to me is kind of the telltale sign of, of Kansas. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And oh, by the way, as they showed in the Baylor game, they were down double digits at half. And then yeah. they come back and win by double digits. Yeah. Like it's a very good Baylor team that is very yeah. talented and very skilled. I'm curious to get your thoughts, just I, and I love picking your brain. You know I love doing this. Of the just Bill Self motivating factor and his ability to I, I, I know the players win games and Coach Self will tell you that. But he's got a way of putting yeah. guys in the right spots, motivating guys calling the right ad calling the right you know calls on offense calling the right calls on defense whatever it might be atos and yeah. i think the big thing is just this is what the dna and the fabric of kansas basketball is and you're a part of that what what can you you know th- i mean th- does that ever surprise you you know or is this just yeah. you know what you expect now from from bill self teams yeah it's it's to me it's what you expect and you know, you you talked about it uh, earlier, and it's just it's one word, man. And I mean, it, it's tough. And yep. even like I don't know, like you can go back, but I just start giggling for a while because I it was thinking in my head, like when I hear sometimes the word tough, like it makes me like have flashbacks sometimes, just because I know 
the the emphasis that Coach Self puts on toughness day in and day out in his practices. So it just it just you're either tough or you're not. And I mean, uh, that has nothing to say. I mean, sometimes we say like guys are just when you when you transfer out, you're just not tough enough. I mean, yep. you may not like it, but we always just because he's gonna he's gonna push there. But like I said, there's flashbacks when we talk about toughness. And uh but when I think about it now, all he's doing I mean, like I, I try to use that toughness. I mean, geez, I had to use a lot of toughness, you know, with the death of my mom and, you know, try to find strength uh, strength that I didn't think I had. And that's all toughness is. And I think Co Self, when you talk about it, that's one of the that's one of his great qualities is making sure that he, those players believe they are tough and he instills that in him. And, you know, and uh, I think that's one of the, a, a great quality with him. And then I think the other part is, you know, how he manages the games, you know, out of timeout. Uh, if they're coming, if they're down, like if they're down at a, a halftime, uh, it's just like, man, I, I remember those, like, those half times, like, yeah, you found a way to like straighten up, and <laughs> you, you found a way to straighten up. Like, I mean, there's some times where you fell short, but the majority of those times, you can expect that team to come out with a whole different mindset. And it's all about toughness again, relying back to toughness. But the way he manages the game, the way he sees it, you know, he sees it like, you know, uh, a chess master like he sees it you know six seven plays ahead and you know that's the way he plans and i think his mind is just you know it's it's beautiful when it comes to you know how he can break down a play and you know uh for me for me personally i just i just you know obviously i got to see how his mind worked but you know he was able to pull plays you know three or four in practice you know uh three or four, you know, possessions back. And you're just like, Hey, how the heck do you remember that? Like, and he's calling it like to the team. You're like, Oh geez, I thought I got by with one because he didn't say anything two possessions ago. Like I thought, and then he's calling it exact like that. So that's just the way he sees it. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a student of the game, still, still learning and, and trying to innovate. But I just think, you know, his ability to, you know, get players to buy in and be tough, and him show, you know, his staff is tough. And then, you know, just for his game management, I just think, you know, putting those two together creates a team that when they get down, you just can't expect them to give. They're not going to give up until the game's over. Like, you got to, you know that. And if they're giving up, then uh, they're going to make an adjustment the next day in practice or some guys are going to be transferring out. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, it, it, when, when, you, when you look at it too, it's like the players reflect him and the, the man, yeah. uh, you know, that's, yeah. that's the head man. And I always go back to the, the load the wagons comment from, from last year that, you know, Bill Self's upbringing is all built off toughness, right? Like that's, yeah. then he talks about that all the time and you can yeah. tell it's <laughs> taken him in his life and he put, applies that into his players. Yeah. Um, and that's why his players love playing for him. Yeah, I, I think it's really interesting. This is just you know where we are in today's college basketball. But if you look at the last two games, the the one guy that I think really is is taking a step forward, and you touched on him earlier, is the transfer Kevin McCuller, um, yeah. who is an older player, experience mm -hmm. wins. He had fifteen and seven in the TCU game, but if you go back to the Baylor game, he had fourteen yeah. and twelve. Yeah. He's had consistent games. Um, yeah, I think the the big thing is is getting to the free throw line. Um, he's he's doing a better job of attacking, being more aggressive. You know, not just settling for for jump shots. You know, find a way to get to the rim and get to the free throw line. He's a good free throw shooter. So, um, I think you know uh, we know what Jalen Wilson and Grady Dick are bring to this team. We know what Dewan Harris brings to this team, right? Yeah. Um, and I think when Dewan you know makes the when it clicks with the one of, okay, I need to be more aggressive. Like if, if with the Baylor game, perfect example, I thought the start of the second half, he came out and got a layup out of pick and roll. Yeah. He was a yeah. one for that in the first half. You could just tell there was a, there was a different mentality and I, I, it stems from the leadership, but I just find it interesting that a transfer Kevin McCullough, who, who has had his lulls, he's had some games where he struggled. Yeah, he has. He's finding some consistency at the right time. And I think he's, an important piece 
to mm-hmm. to this Kansas team just because obviously they need the production. Um, just uh, they don't get enough of it from their bench. They can. I, I think it's in a game to game they could get enough production, but if Kevin McCuller can can give them 15, 17, and eight, yeah, man, that what a thing yeah. that is, especially for an yeah. undersized team. Yeah, and we, you know, you talk about Kevin McCuller, and you know, I don't care what player you are like i don't care what player you are what system you're in when you come into a build self system again you have to learn that system it's going to take a while so you kind of got to look at kevin like he's a freshman like yeah. yeah but he's not a freshman because he's experienced and you know he's done at a high level so his adjustment is going to be quicker than your average normal freshman just because He's not a freshman, but in this system, he just has to learn the system. He'll pick up on it. Once he picks up on it, he'll be able to make his adjustments. And I think, uh, I think to me, that's one of the impressive things with Kevin is I think he's really starting to figure it out. And I think now, you know, I, from when I've started watching them, you know, when we haven't had the pot going, uh, I start, I just start, just start seeing a little bit. I felt like leadership from him. I see him talking more, mm-hmm. talking more to the team. So, and again, uh, this is a guy that you know he's he's used to these type of moments, but now he's starting to understand kind of the flow and how they do things. And you know, I think that's just a credit to you know him being able to play at a high level before he got there. But, you know, I think that's maybe why some of his production was there. He's still trying to figure it out. But if he can continue uh, to to produce the way he is, like you said, 15 and 7, yeah. I mean, geez, that's, again, that's that's taking more heat off of Jalen. Uh, it's it's just taking off heat off a lot of guys. And, again, especially with DeWan being able to sneak in a couple every now and then to keep the defense honest, that's going to allow everything, going to open up. And a guy we haven't talked about as well, too, who's, really been doing well I think uh and I've been really proud to see him get confidence and and, and gain confidence as KJ Adams you know he's no question man he's definitely you know out there playing with confidence and and a lot of things you know I think one of the things I like watching him is like you know nobody can ever I mean to the magnitude that Tiger Woods did did, did the fist pump after a putt goes down like right I mean you gotta you gotta be big time for that moment but yep. when I love watching KJ when he makes a big play, he does this little kind of fist pump deal. And it's just like, I mean, you see him in the, I'm you're starting to see that fist pump more, but again, that's him gaining more confidence coach trusted in him. So, I mean, this is a team that they're, they're clicking right now and guys, you know, are getting a little bit more minutes on the bench and getting some op- different opportunities. So, um, I think they're clicking at the right time and, uh, it's going to be, you know, interesting to see what Kevin can do throughout this stretch. It's funny with KJ scores. It's it's like he's he's so overly excited, but yeah, you can tell him he just wants to help the team in every way. And I don't think he's used to scoring, so it's just kind of like a it's a very genuine like yeah. you know like fist pump. Like it's like the Dwight Schrute like yeah. meme. You know where it's just like I'm a, hey, I'm <laughs> I'm always like man. I think he's gonna like. Like turn around and get hype and like a player's <laughs> just standing there and just like oh yeah knock I mean like I don't want to get hit by him like that would yeah. be like that wouldn't feel good but his you know, his IQ though in pick and roll because I think he knows where yeah. DeLong yeah. wants him to be and and he knows where like he's a quick finisher so he's really figured out how to play yeah. that pick and roll and yeah. it's so effective because you know the defense is worried about so many pieces and he just fall, falls into the hole and he's he's right there you know and. He's um he's not going to force either. So I think you you mentioned you know him and I think his his improvement to just number one is willingness to embrace whatever roles asked of him. He doesn't care if he scores yeah. twenty or two. It doesn't matter. Um, but I also think and and I'm curious to get your thoughts on this of just national championship team with Ochai and Christian and and David and Mitch and Remy and those guys and they kind of set the tone and Jalen and Dewan like knew their roles. Um, yeah. I, I look at this year's team, like Jalen Wilson, the, the Texas game uh, when he when he didn't play well, he was the most like the most enthusiastic guy off the bench when yeah. he was in foul trouble. Like he just had a leadership presence that is was that is so different than what we saw from Jalen last year. Similar situation with Ochai, like Ochai was never that like guy, and then all of a sudden senior year, he was way more emotional and like knew he had to be the leader. Yeah. I find it really interesting that 
I'm still so fascinated at how good Grady Dick has been for French. Yeah. yeah. Like that's so hard to do. And it's, it's Kansas. It's the, you know, it's the standard. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's hard to do this with the, you know, as a freshman too, <laughs> as a freshman man. And he's been so good and he keeps getting better. Like it's, it's, it's amazing. It's like his shot IQ is a, he's, he's shooting more pull-ups now, which is something yeah. I wanted him to do. He's such yeah. a great pull-up yeah. shooter. And he takes the shot fast for one. Yeah, that's from Leia. He, he takes what the defense gives him. He's such yeah. a great shooter, and he doesn't take bad shots. He defends. He's in passing lanes. He rebounds. If he's not getting rebounds, he's getting some sort of deflection, or he's taking a charge, or he's on the floor. I mean, he just is everywhere, and he never takes a possession off. And he's a guy that like shows the same emotion Jalen Wilson did like two years ago. You know, like he's kind of like I'm going to do my job, and like yeah. I'm not going to get too high. And he's one of the best players, and he's a premier freshman. Yeah. in college basketball by far and i i think it's a testament to the kid i think it's a testament to to bill self the program what they identify in recruiting yes he was a mcdonald's all-american like yes he's talented and it's very different than you know the ochai and christian story because he is very talented but he still plays the same way most kansas players in bill self's tenure play and i think that's why they are where they are and i think it's why they got a chance to repeat i, I think this repeat word is valid. I think Kansas deserves to be in this this thought process. Like they absolutely can repeat. There's no question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, talking Grady Dick. Then yeah, we'll uh, get off of that. Yeah. So Grady, man, and we haven't talked Grady in a while. And geez, yep. Gosh, is he has he been has he been great? And you know, Coach Self talks very very high praise on him, and and really touching on the the point of him being his shooting ability. I mean, gosh, his he can get that shot off really quick, and um, and he stretches the defense with his ability. His ability to stretch the defense and just shoot over people. Obviously, being six eight, that helps out a little bit as well too. But you know, being a freshman and being able to take those shots, the shots that he takes, and be able to hit big time shots like that, I think that's why Coach Self says he's the best shooting freshman he's ever coached at in, in, in KU history. He may be one of the best ever as a as a freshman in the in 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 KU history so uh being able to shoot the ball coming the way the coming uh coming out the way he did and you mentioned it really best him being able to get to that he kind of hit a a point too as well where it was just like three point shot or nothing you know he'll run off a screen three point (laughs) shot now let me get rid of it let me get rid of it so I can find that that perfect shot I'm working to try to get open. I'm not just sitting in the corner waiting, but I'm trying to come off a screen and move, but no shot past it. Then he started figuring it out. You know, let me get to that one dribble pull up. Now, mm. you know, a couple of times he's gotten to the rim. Now when you know, Jerry, when you can stretch the T from three and stretch it from deep and be accurate, now you can get to your mid-range or you can get uh, to the rim and create an opportunity out of that. I mean, that's a, t- I mean, you know, that's the league. Yeah, <laughs> no question. Well, the fact is, too, man, like his shot fake is so effective. Yeah, and yeah. he doesn't, if, if he just gets you off balance just the slightest, if you leave the floor just slightly, I mean, that, it's so quick. He, one dribble, boom, it's gone. Like you can get back into play, but it's gone. And, and like you said, his size, like you, good luck contesting that because it's going to be off before you can get back into play. So, um, yeah, just a, impressive, impressive what he's doing. I look at Kansas, too, right now. Um, you know, there's only four 20, 21 teams right now in the Big 12. It's Kansas, Texas, Kansas State, and Baylor, those top four. There is a tie right now with Kansas and Texas atop the conference. Kansas has the tiebreaker. Um, but you look at the next three, and the last three of the regular season here as we close the, the regular season uh, conference portion, home yeah. versus West Virginia, home versus Tech, then they then Kansas goes to Texas. And, you know, I, I, I have a feeling a lot of people are saying, like, it's going to come down to that. Um, Kansas is not probably going to be talking about that because they want to focus in on these these two home games. Um, but man, it, you know Kansas, they're for, they, they were when that long ago they were on a three game losing streak. Um, yeah. You know, and and it was uh, oh my gosh, well you know what is Kansas and and here we are and it, you know it's very similar to you know they got they got beat pretty bad by TCU, very similar to what they did last year. They got beat yeah. bad by Kentucky. They had a losing yeah. streak in there. It's very similar. Um, in terms of if you put the, the team side by side, I mean, it's it's kind of eerie of just like where this team's at. It's very similar. So um, they got some tough games ahead. Oh, yeah. Fun to follow, Jeff. I know um, it's great to to have you back, man, talking talking hoops yeah. and, and talking KU, man. And 
some big games for for Kansas, and yeah. Kansas fans as we close it, and then we're gonna be talking NCAA tournament, seed in yeah. a whole bit, but uh, one at a time, one at a time. Yeah, one. Coaches like say right. One yeah, that's time. right. Hey, I, I'll tell you what Kansas fans are hoping right now, Jay. They're they're over in Texas right now. I, I can't. They're thinking, okay, we got two home games. We should be good. Then we got Texas. We can play it out. But they're like, well, Texas man, they got Baylor and TCU. Yeah, I know. I know. So I know. I, I, I the favorite. players and the coaches are like, hey, we got to take care of business. Yep. But the fans, they're like, I hope they lose one of those. <laughs> yeah, that's right, man. That's why this 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 TCU win for Kansas was such a such a big it was one, huge. like you know, it was huge. and that was, it was a huge win. And was I, you know, it was it was a tough. I mean, they, they to to go back to a place where you got smacked by that team, and you go to their building and you're able to get a win like that. Um, yeah. Not surprised though. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm not surprised when, when Kansas does this because it's just in their in their DNA, man. So uh, we'll talk next week. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll cover some of these games and. Uh, to be gearing up, man, for for uh, for a fun march. Yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. Good to be back, Rock Chop. Thanks for watching this production of KC Sports Network, the fastest growing sports media network in Kansas City. Check out these videos that feature our team of more than fifteen former players, insiders, and analysts, bringing you the best Chiefs coverage you can find. Entertain, educate, inform. KC Sports Network. <laughs>